Terima kasih Tuhan buat kesempatan sore hari ini, malam hari ini Tuhan. Kami sudah uh, memujimu, menyembahmu sekali lagi Tuhan. Dan sebentar kami akan um, mendengarkan bagian dari isi hatimu Tuhan, pesanmu Tuhan untuk teman-teman kami di Melbourne, dimanapun mereka berada di gereja ataupun di rumah. Uh, gunakan mulut bibir hambamu Tuhan untuk menyampaikan isi hatimu supaya teman-teman kami juga Tuhan bisa lebih baik lagi Tuhan untuk menyampaikan firmanmu Tuhan firman dan supaya firmanmu Tuhan dan kebenaranmu kabar baik Tuhan Yesus itu akan bisa disebar lebih lagi dan mereka Tuhan bisa menjadi anak-anakmu Tuhan yang bisa Tuhan memberitakan kabar baik Injil terima kasih hanya dalam namamu kami berdoa mengucap syukur haleluya amin Oke, okay. hold up, let me just, uh, uh, how do I get rid of this? Oke, okay. alright, uh, thanks for having me, sekali lagi kita udah balik lagi ya, uh, I just had my lunch, kalian itu baru uh, dinner kalian, no, what's the time there, it's four plus, it's eight o'clock, is that right? Yeah, it's four hours difference between uh, Bandung and Melbourne, so... Tetap semangat guys, jam 8, tapi kalian masih semangat. Thank you for the guys who are still at church. You guys are amazing. Uh, the, the work that you're doing is, is amazing, yeah, uh, to serve the people. And so, uh, okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Let's just get into it, supaya kita nggak terlalu lama juga. I promise I won't be that long. Uh, ini dikasih 2 jam, but I don't think I'll need it. Um, so, let's get to it. And um, let's get to it so that we can finish. Uh, probably not... not uh, If it's two hours, it'll be like 10 o'clock. I don't think we'll finish that long. So, okay, I'll share my screen and here we go. All right, cool. Can you see my screen? All right, cool. So my topic is now about delivering the message. Kalau tadi Cijes ngomongin tentang homiletika, how to create the message. Uh, and if you remember, waktu tadi, uh, the arrows were pointing in, yeah? So when you're creating your message, when you're crafting it, uh, kalian itu semua harus ngambil, uh, nyerap semua uh, dari luar, dari firman Tuhan, um, dari illustrations, from the quotes, everything. You want to be able to take it in and, and process it. Tapi sekarang, once you have your message, you actually have to send it out. You have to deliver the message, yeah? If not... Kalau enggak, enggak efektif. Okay? And the quote here is that a message is only as good as the way it is delivered and received. Ya? Yeah? Jadi sebagus apapun khotbah kalian, kalau kalian actually deliver it in a bad way, ya message itu enggak akan sampai gitu kan? Dan itu akan malah jadi enggak enggak efektif gitu. Padahal kalian tadi udah bergumul dengan Tuhan, you know, kalian udah berdoa, udah saat teduh, dengerin lagu-lagu worship 24 jam, to get this great message from God. Tapi itu semua akan sia-sia kalau kita nggak bisa menyampaikan pesan itu kepada pendengar kita. ya. So again, communication is more than words we use to get the message across. It's also about how we say those words. Uh, think about it like this. Kayak misalnya ada seorang perempuan, ya. let's say namanya Anna. Dia itu mau ngambil satu panci yang berat, yang besar, dari uh, top shelf di kitchen dia, di kitchen cabinetnya. Nah, biasanya dia akan ambil bangku, gitu kan, maybe like a, a stool like this, uh, maybe something a bit stronger ya. Um, tapi dia bisa naik di situ, dan dia akan ambil, and she can do it, gitu. She can actually do it on her own. Tapi hari itu dia kayak lagi agak malas, atau mungkin badannya lagi nggak enak, gitu ya. Jadi dia, I'm just gonna ask my boyfriend, gitu kan. Si Andy lagi duduk di sofa, gitu kan. So, she asked, Hey, can you help me get the get this uh, this, this panci? Uh, jawaban si Andy gimana? Oke. Okay. Tapi nada bicaranya gimana? As Anna described it, uh, he didn't say it, he barked it. Ya, dia bilang, "Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Could have said something like that," gitu ya. Nah, si Anna itu jadi sedih. Ya. Yeah. Uh, emang am I really that troublesome? Emang aku gitu ngerepotin ya? Mungkin si Andy bete ya. Karena aku tuh nggak bisa ngerjain apa-apa sendiri gitu. Apa dia mau putus? Apa dia udah nggak cinta sama saya gitu ya? So she starts to think and she starts to get this message in her head. But actually, when you ask Andy, what's what's he thinking? He's like dia nggak ngerasa bodoh atau bete gitu. 
he he would have done it uh, gladly ya dia akan menelong dengan senang hati sebenarnya just hanya saja pas lagi ditanya itu dia lagi main game he's in the middle of a game and dia bentar lagi mau menang he's just about to win gitu ya nggak bisa di post kalau game kan kadang-kadang kebanyakan ya nggak uh, bisa di post and he's about to win gitu jadi dia ya pasti tanya kayak gitu ya dia jawab oke okay. oke okay, simple tapi ya uh, again uh, singkat padat tapi agak sharp agak pedas sekali kedengarannya gitu ya so the message is actually positive ya yeah? si Andy actually setuju dengan uh, requestnya si Anna gitu kan um, tapi karena cara penyampaiannya yang kurang baik jadi nggak diterima dengan baik dan kemungkinan besar they're gonna have a bit of a problem throughout the day. Mungkin malah akan jadi berantem atau apa gitu. Padahal sebenarnya mereka in agreement. Okay. So the message was uh, the intended. Yang intended answer is the right message. Tapi cara menyampaikannya. Okay. So once again, how your audience receives the message is dependent not only on the message content, but also how it's delivered. So this quote on the screen is very, very important. Yeah. Jadi, if you've already created some time to create your message to craft your message make sure kalian juga ada waktu untuk uh, pikirkan gimana cara kalian akan deliver the message okay now the first thing that you need to do is actually know your audience okay now now that you understand the importance of delivering the message well the first step is uh, to know your audience now That was actually the first thing I asked uh, Chijes, yeah. Kan uh, Chijes diundang untuk uh, mengisi uh, this workshop, and I was asked to help as well, gitu kan. And um, so I asked her, like, okay, so what's the topic? That's the first one. Um, but then the second thing I asked is, who are the audience? Who's gonna attend, right? So, um, so I know the topic is homiletics, and then um, I know that you guys are youths, right? Because itu sangat akan mempengaruhi a lot of things on how I prepare the message. Will it be a formal tone? Should I actually wear a suit and tie, right, to make myself look presentable? Um, will it require a, a PowerPoint presentation with lots of uh, points, you know, like a wall of text? Um, because some people may, might like that, you know, they want to take notes or they just want to take photos of uh, the presentation, you know. Um, there's things like that. And um, what kind of graphics can I use? Like the graphics that we're using uh, today is quite, you know, trendy. Is quite. Uh, apa uh, youthful lah gitu ya uh, and then what's the language I can use is it Indonesian only is it English only or is it both and thankfully both yeah I think uh, I'm I'm jumping between between languages and I think it's okay I'm just gonna check uh, if that's okay with you guys can I see thumbs up yeah cool all right oh actually just a bit of background maybe uh, tadi she just already introduced herself uh, myself I'm uh, Indonesian Um, so that you know your speaker, I guess. Uh, I'm Indonesian, but I grew up in Brisbane. So uh, not as far as Bandung from you guys. So Brisbane is about, uh, what, like 2,000 Ks up north uh, from you guys. So I was uh, I moved there in 96 with my parents, and then I left in 2017 to go back to Indonesia to chase Chijes. Um, and... And so far, I've been here, and so I got her, and then uh, so I've been living here in Bandung. So that's why I'm uh, English is more natural to me. Yeah. Okay. So going back to knowing your audience um, uh, in that way. So I had to actually choose as well because I, I have uh, you know sometimes my Aussie colloquialism comes out as well. You know my Aussie sayings. Like, will that actually make sense to you guys, uh, or do I have to stick with Peribahasa uh, Indonesia? Those kinds of things have to uh, I have to factor in because I need to know uh, my audience, right? So the more I know about my audience, the more you guys know about your audience, the better you can speak to them, and the higher the chance your message will be received uh, positively, and also the faster you can get the audience on your side. The faster you get, the message can get across. Yeah. Now the the audience is not just about uh, the audience is not just about here. There's some criteria. It's not just about age. Um, there's can also be about language and ethnicity, like I mentioned uh, before, yeah, uh, location. So like you guys are in Australia, I'm in Indonesia. So I need, I know that you guys actually, you know, more than likely you, you guys will know um, uh, English and that you'll also have some uh, knowledge about Australian culture. But then also um, maybe in Australia is not too relevant, but in Indonesia, mungkin, uh, are you guys urban or are you guys rural? 
because that will then determine maybe your income level or your education level. Uh, you know, the types of uh, activities that happen in the city will be different to the types of things that happen in, in smaller towns. So the references, the, you know, the things that I'll, I'll speak about will change. Um, even sometimes your, your marital status, your social status will change as well. So if you remember the, the story about Anna and Andy, um, I was actually writing it as a husband and wife. But then I know that you guys are actually uh, younger than that. And probably most of you guys aren't married. Uh, you know, so I changed it to be a bit uh, to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, so, you know, some stories in the sermon that you can use uh, it doesn't have to be true. Um, it, if it's if it's a true story, you, you make sure you tell it truthfully. But if it's just an illustration, you can, uh, you know, you can kind of craft it so it fits your audience better. Okay. Uh, and then also, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> ethnicity is there. Uh, double. Sorry about that. Nah, jadi, yeah, okay. So use examples that are um, easy for them to understand. Gitu ya. Jadi, uh, don't just uh, use examples that are uh, easy for you. For example, aku pernah diundang untuk uh, khotbah di uh, Banjar Sari. Okay. So most of you guys probably don't know it and uh, don't know where it is. It's actually in Jawa Barat near uh, Tasikmalaya. Tasikmalaya is Chijas's hometown. And Banjar Sari is about an hour and a half drive away from there. Lah. And so I was asked to preach there and it was the main church. Jadi kayak uh, uh, gereja umum ya. So the, the people were in their 40s, 50s kind of thing. And I came in with the naive uh, belief that, um, you know, I'll just use my illustrations and they'll get it. Gitu. And I was actually talking to them about, uh, pernah nggak kalian di interv- uh, mikir pengen diinterview di perusahaan multinasional? Right, and straight out of the bat, when I looked at them, I'm like, "This is the wrong illustration." Karena mereka banyakkan jaga toko, you know, or they they have a restoran, gitu kan. So I don't think, uh, especially like the umum tante tante, gitu ya, um, like multinationals. Um, that's probably not in their in their mindset, gitu, and that's not in their uh, imagination at all, gitu. So I uh, so that was a, a mistake that I I did once, gitu. So knowing your audience is really really important. That way you can get the message across uh, faster and, and more effectively. Okay, so that's the first step. And then the second step that you need to do is actually know your strengths. So you know about them and then now you have to know about yourself. Setiap dari kita punya kelebihan kita masing-masing. You know, we have our own hobbies, our passion and different skills. So yeah, it's all good to admire atau menikmati gaya preaching atau gaya maybe a, a film uh, style or an animation style from somebody. But we have to dig. Kita harus ta- gali dan cari tahu skill apa yang Tuhan telah berikan dalam diri kita. Because in the Bible it says, um, the Lord asked him, and this is, he's asking Moses in Exodus uh, 4 verses 2, yeah? what's that in your hand? So Tuhan itu sedang nanya, Moses was um, Moses was like uh, rejecting God's request to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Um, he was giving many excuses, saying, "Oh yeah, I can't really speak. Uh, you know, I'm a wanted man. I'm a fugitive, and all this kind of stuff. I don't have anybody uh, who will believe me. And like, what will they say?" But then God just simply asked, "What is that in your hand?" You know, um, tongkat yang tadinya dipakai. He was holding a staff. Tongkat gembalanya dia kan. Nah, tongkat yang tadi dipakai untuk ngegebuk domba yang lagi keluar jalur, or you know, to guide the, the sheep, Tuhan bisa pakai untuk memukul kalah para penyihir Mesir. Dan, you know, and actually parted the sea. So, um, trust that God has been shaping you all this time to be his messenger. Jadi, tongkat yang ada di tangan Musa itu udah dipersiapkan oleh Tuhan sendiri sebenarnya. Musa selama 40 tahun, or however many years in the wilderness, it actually is preparing him to be the leader that God wants him to be. In the same way, God is already preparing you. Maybe he's sending you to Melbourne to, to study, but not only that, he's developing you as well in your leadership, in your character, and in many things that he can use to bless others. Okay? Nah, mungkin ada di sini teman-teman yang nggak pinter ngomong uh, atau nervous kalau harus uh, public speaking. Is there anybody like that here? Uh, I see a few hands uh, shooting up, I think. Yeah. Um, so first, I want to um, congratulate you um, on on actually taking a step. Yeah. 
I applaud you for being here and actually doing this training, Gadogan, because I know you want to, you know, there's something, uh, there's a, a weakness or something, and you want to get better at it. You want to get better at sharing God's message. But remember, preaching itu bukan selalu uh, berarti getting up in front of a pulpit and uh, talking to a crowd. Okay. Uh, a few examples that I can think of that might be relevant is, um, you know, if you're not a public speaker, maybe you're a writer, you know. Uh, you know, maybe you think, ah, nggak mungkin lah aku bisa nulis buku yang dicetak and dipublish gitu. It's okay, just uh, just practice. Latihan aja dulu, nulis uh, inspiring uh, WhatsApp messages, you know, biblical WhatsApp messages. Why not? Maybe something like this, you know. Um, this can be shared around uh, a WhatsApp group. And if you have uh, your, if you share it to your mom or your your uh, aunties, you know the power of mama. It might actually go viral quicker than uh, a video or even a sermon message. So you know, don't look down on what you have. Or maybe uh, there's somebody here who's uh, good at uh, you know, um, is actually funny. Uh, maybe you can't speak, uh, you can't preach yet, but you can actually make people laugh. Maybe that's something that you can do. That's actually a strength. That's actually a you know an actually unique talent that you can actually use. Atau mungkin ada yang jago ngegambar. You know, all your notepads are full of uh, doodles and sketches. Uh, nowadays, we are more and more um, uh, visual learners and visual uh, visual people. So that's something that God uses that God can use to spread His message, right? Now, um, these are just examples of uh, some examples of skills that you might have. You know, um, so. Something like that, like you know, you you might be a video producer. So this can't happen. This conference can't happen without um, the people behind the the media people behind the scenes. Um, so they're also serving God. They're also helping spread the message as well. Maybe you're a musician uh, or dancer or singer. You know. So these are just some examples. Um, so whatever it is, you got to dig. Uh, you got to dig at it and work on it. Be excellent and let your uh, light shine in the dark. Okay. Now, on the flip side, once you know your strength, um, also know your weaknesses so that you don't force yourself to be something you're not. Karena God doesn't call you to things he hasn't prepared you for, right? Don't try to be something you're not. Uh, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't work on uh, getting better at those things, but don't make it your main ministry. Yeah? There's a study in 2016 that found that uh, we tend to see weaknesses as more changeable. Jadi kayak, oh yeah, I'm not that good at that. I think I can work on that to get better, right? That's how we usually see things. But um, various studies actually have shown that um, when we focus on developing our strengths, we grow faster than when trying to improve our weaknesses. Okay? So don't focus too much on your weakness, um, but actually find those strengths. And if you don't know yet what your strengths are, I want to share a few tips on how to discover them so that you can actually use them to share the message of God, yeah? Okay, so the first one is actually pay attention, which it might seem obvious, but sometimes you'll miss something that's in plain sight yeah, if you focus on the wrong things. Uh, so when I was at uni, uh, many, many moons ago, uh, many decades ago, I guess, uh, I took a course called Creative Advertising. And the, one of the reasons why I took it was, so I think it's Creative Advertising, uh, you know, kayaknya bakal kerja di... You know, you make TV commercials, you meet uh, models, you meet like actors and uh, bikin something yang keren, lucu, menang banyak awards. Um, so th that's the one of the reasons why I actually wanted to be a creative advertiser. Okay. But then um, dengan berjalannya waktu, um, I found that uh, my colleagues, my friends uh, at uni and stuff, they actually had more better creative ideas and they can come up with it better and faster than, than I could. Um, so it was quite frustrating, to be honest, because I wanted to be something, I wanted this to be my thing, right? Um, but then I actually began to pay attention and I actually discovered that I, I actually see things more strategically. So I know I can see how to position this product better or how to uh, create this branding, how to, how to make this grow um, strategically, you know, because, um, That's that's just the way I'm wired. At, at first, among frustasi karena ya nggak jadi kerja buat yang kreatif deh, you know. But um, pas udah lebih sadar bahwa I'm, I've got that strategic eye, it's actually easier for me to just uh, flow to to give better input, to give better uh, contributions to the projects that I'm working on. 
gitu ya. Jadi just pay attention because sometimes you might miss it or you might just you have a glasses that you see I just want to be this. But then pay attention to see actually no, that's not where you're supposed to be. And then the the second thing you can do is actually um, think about how different activities make you feel. Uh, something is a strength if it makes you feel successful or if you're drawn to it, even if you don't know why, or it fully engages you when doing it. And after you do something, you do this activity, you feel uh, energized, fulfilled, and powerful. Nah, mungkin ada teman-teman yang lagi pelayanan di gereja gitu. You guys must have, you know, you guys are doing long hours at the church. But then, uh, you know, if it's your passion and it's something that is your strength, at the end of tonight, you'll actually be more pumped than when you were this morning. Because, you know, oh man, I was so energized by the, the workshop, you know, and because that is something that is in your strength. There was a man who, um, when he was a, when he was younger, itu diidentify bahwa dia tuh kayaknya bisa berenang dengan sangat cepat. Okay, so that akhirnya si mamanya masukin dia ke uh, kursus renang, uh, klub renang, and then he actually uh, entered many competitions, and then he won a lot of those competitions growing up. But then he was actually uh, um, suddenly he in high school he just quit because it turns out even though he was winning, it just wasn't something that he liked. He actually hated waking up early in the morning to practice swimming at five, you know, uh, and in Melbourne during winter, that would be freezing, right? So he didn't like that at all. So he actually quit the swim team and started pursuing something that energized him instead. He was actually, he wanted to make music. And so it's definitely possible to be good at something that you hate doing. But that's not the type of strength that you want to, um, you know, you want to improve necessarily. Instead, think of the things that energize you and excite you, even if you don't excel at them yet. Those may be the strengths that you set out to develop and grow. And then the third thing is actually, uh, you know, asking your friends and your family, what are your strengths? Because sometimes the people in your life can see them probably quite clearer than you, you know, ask your friends, ask the people at church, ask your family members. Ask your boss if you already work, your co-workers or your mentors. Um, you know, mungkin ada yang bilang, you know, eh, uh, you know, you're actually quite funny. You know, kalau, kalau, kalau lagi ada uh, comment, you make a comment, kamu nyeletuk tuh lumayan kocak juga gitu. Uh, you know, that could be something, you know, maybe you can incorporate comedy into your your message. Tapi kalau ada juga yang bilang, you know, uh, ya yeah, kalau kamu ke jokes tuh kayaknya, ya, yeah, sounds like a dad joke deh. Agak, agak flat ya gitu. So, you know, you might, you, don't, don't take it too hard, you know, but analyze it, see if it's actually true or not, and then you know take it, take it to take it on board lah, so that you can grow and you can develop better. So if you know that's not your strength, okay, um, that's that's okay. I'm myself more of a if you can kind of tell, I'm more of a marketer, right? So the, my first preaching, my first messages, my first sermons uh, back in Brisbane was like basically a marketing presentation. My my friends after I gave the the talk, it's the talk, uh, they told me it's like. But that was really good. I felt like I was being sold something, like <laughs> you know, because I was like more of a marketing presentation than a preaching in a way. So you know, I'm trying to evolve my style as well to be more of a, of a preacher when I'm preaching a sermon. Okay. So yeah. So the goal is to identify things that you wouldn't have thought of or on your own. So again, please identify your strengths, develop them, and use it to be a blessing to others. Okay. So the next thing. Now that you know your audience and then now you know yourself, you have to know your medium. What's your platform? Okay. Um, you have to be able to combine both your strength and then also where the audience is, what who they are and where they are. So what platform will you be using to share your message? Okay. Um, so the message has to follow the playbook of the medium. Imagine, for example, you're just using, uh, for example, something like this. Oops, uh, this. You're just using a blank image and you put a little speaker there because there's actually audio playing, okay? On Instagram. Now, most people would just basically just scroll, right? They probably won't even see that, okay? So you gotta know the rules of the, of the platform to be able to do that. Now that sound of experience juga is actually quite important because um, I see, uh, let me just share some, I'll, I'll stop sharing. Uh, I'll share something else on my screen. So a lot of churches, if you know, uh, they share uh, sermons, their sermons. Uh, let me have a look. Where is it? 
they usually share their Sunday sermon. That's usually on YouTube or something. And then they just put it up on IG, right? They just copy paste it. They cut it down from 20 minutes to one minute. And then that's it. They just play it. But then kebanyakan orang kan scrolling with the sound off. So that is actually a very, very bad experience on IG. Um, kalau misalnya you just, you're just scrolling and then um, you see a sermon, but then there's no, uh, that's it. It's just uh, with the sound off. You're just looking at someone's, you know, cuman cuap cuap and not hearing anything. So this is actually a good example, right? So, so you can see that I'm, the, the sound's off, but I'm getting the message uh, as long as the internet is okay. So, you know, the sound is off, which is the normal, usual IG experience, but then we're still getting the message because there's a caption in the middle. So that's the type of thing that you got to figure out that you got to think about when you're uh, publishing your uh, your message, when you're delivering your message. Okay, we won't watch to the end, uh, but you get the you get the message of it, right? Um, or for example, if you're wanting to, uh, let me share my PowerPoint again. Yep. Um, yeah, so, or if you want to, uh, upload a, a one hour sermon onto TikTok, you know, the ser- the platform is actually going to reject you. That's not, a, that's not even uh, allowed to do that. So you got to know how to best use the platform. Uh, another uh, example would be horizontal versus vertical. I'm a, a traditional filmmaker. So, you know, back in the day, I would shoot in uh, 16 by nine, uh, widescreen like that, horizontal. And so when people started shooting vertical with their phones, I was part of the movement that says, no, uh, turn it around, make it horizontal. Um, that's the way video should be. But then, you know, actually with the platforms that are available now with IG story, Snapchat, TikTok, and all that, yeah, mendingan vertical, because that's just the native way to do it. Kalau horizontal, malah, you get punished by the platform because it's not uh, conducive to the to the ecosystem from the, from the platform, gitu kan? So those are the types of things that you got to know when you're actually wanting to produce and uh, publish your messages on these platforms. Ini kan soalnya juga kalian kan uh, projectnya adalah making a video. So I'm talking more about this spe- specifically dulu ya. But of course, there's other platforms such as maybe if you're writing a blog or you're writing a book, those things will, will determine how you write, uh, what types of stories you can include, you know, the length of the, uh, the piece and all that kind of stuff. So you got to know your platform. Now, also don't forget about traditional public speaking yeah, or preaching. So I guess um, even like in this pandemic uh, time, kalian mungkin masih uh, belum on site ya, yeah? or maybe you guys have started again. Um, but leading up to uh, October, before we started on site again, all our church was online, you know. But even online church still required somebody uh, preaching, even though it's not on the pulpit on the main stage, but we recorded it, right? So there's always a time and place where an effective message can be delivered by standing up and just saying what needs to be said, you know. So I want to share a few tips on how you can come across well on camera or in person. Maybe not for this project. For this project, kan kalian mungkin gak cuman uh, preaching style ya, tapi more creative. But then in the future, because we're learning homiletics, you will, I think, be required to stand up at one stage and speak and preach, okay? So here's the first tip. Some uh, things that you can consider is actually stand up straight, or in my case, sit up straight. I'm actually off the uh, the back seat here. If I'm just slouching, if I'm just sitting like this, and uh, it's probably not a good look, and you're probably not going to pay attention to me really well because I'm. A bit so standing up or sitting straight actually makes a difference. Okay, and then the second thing is that you want to speak with a clear voice. Okay, you got to speak loud enough for people to hear without having to concentrate too hard. Um, but don't shout. Because <laughs> that's just annoying. Okay. And your voice should be warm and be natural. So you don't have to lower your voice or, you know, to make it sound credible. I don't know if you know the story. There's a there's a CEO in uh, Silicon Valley called Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, she's a she's a lady. Dia uh, CEO dari Theranos, like a medical company. And um, what she does is actually she lowers her voice to make her sound credible because there's a research that says that women with lower voices, uh, men take more seriously. But then it was found out that she was a fake. 
um, not just her voice, but her, her actual company was a fake as well. So she had this persona of like fakeness. So please don't do that. If you're a girl, don't try to lower your voice to, uh, to get uh, respect. Okay. But on the other hand, don't speak too high either. Cause then if you speak like this the whole time and uh, you know, I'm trying to sound like a chipmunk, uh, it could get annoying real fast, you know? So try to just be natural. Don't, uh, don't be too fast or anything like that. And uh, don't, you know, play with your tone like that. Okay. And then also the next thing is actually about articulation when you're talking with a clear voice. Um, so you got to speak clearly and with diction. Okay. Now uh, I'm Aussie. So the Aussie speech tends to, you know, a bit of slur and mumble. And um, so when I first came back to Indo, uh, I met Jess's uh, family. They actually complained because like, si Bonas tuh ngomong apa sih? Dia selalu kayak cuma kumur-kumur gitu doang. So I'm trying to fix this. Okay. And in, in so doing, I've actually turned to be more American than Aussie. So um, so pardon me if, uh, if I don't sound Aussie uh, enough to you guys. Right. And the next thing about clear voice is actually speed, you know, don't rush it. It's not like you get, uh, you know, if you get through this quicker, the message will get to the audience faster and they'll understand it better. No, you know, don't just talk in one speed all the time, but pause, breathe, let your words sink in and let people be able to digest it. Use it to emphasize important points and let people think about it more, you know? And also use good language, good words. Don't swear, of course, but then yeah, don't use bad words and things like that. That will really help uh, elevate the quality of your uh, preaching. The next point is actually about eye contact when you're preaching. So it just makes it more personal and more engaging. If you're just looking down, like I could just be looking down on my notes and like, you know, I'm just reading this. Uh, I could be speaking with a clear voice, but I'm looking down on my notes and, uh, you know, what's the point? I could just send you the text and you can read it out yourself. Um, and if you're on stage, here's a little tip, pick somebody who seems interested. Um, you know, so if, if you're preaching to a you know, or actually, you know, what? these guys are engaging with my, with my message because it'll connect with them. It'll actually, uh, you know, like it'll uh, give them uh, approval that, you know, I'm hearing this right, but it'll also give you confidence because, oh yeah, they're agreeing with me. They're actually liking what I'm saying. Uh, so that's, that's a, a tip as well. Uh, for Zoom, uh, for what we're doing right now, uh, I'm actually looking into the camera, right? Into the camera of my laptop, which is here. Um, I could be looking at myself here or here, um, but don't do that because that actually uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit unnatural. So this is something that you gotta, you gotta practice, you know, um, looking into a lens is, is a little bit unnatural, but that's something that we can, uh, we can practice when we're delivering this type of, uh, videotaped message. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the next thing is about body language which is a little bit hard for me to do because I'm like here and you can only see this part of me, but you know, you can also see that I'm using my hands. I'm, uh, you know, using my head movements, uh, appropriate ones. You don't have to like, you know, uh, I'm not Indian, so I don't have to do uh, Indian head movements or anything like that. So that's it. You got to use your body language because 70 to 93% of all communication is nonverbal. So use it to your best advantage. Use the hand gestures, use your facial expression. If it's something positive, smile, light up. If it's something that they got to think about, maybe have a more thoughtful look, you know? So actually play with those assets that you have in your tools. And then the last thing is actually about having a joyful spirit. You know, you got to speak with joy and speak with passion because we are the bearer of good news. Kita membawa kabar baik. Ephesians 2 verse 17 in the ESV says, he came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who who are near, because that's what we're bringing. We're bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. So don't be intimidated just because, you know, a famous or important person, maybe a senior pastor or, you know, the prime minister of Australia, or maybe your mom or your dad is, is sitting in the audience. Don't get intimidated because the message that you're bringing is very important and very good. Okay. So yeah, again, don't look vicious or with an annoyed look uh, on your face, unless maybe you're rebuking them. But 
you know, only stay in that moment for, you know, for a few seconds. And then in general, don't look pissed off, lah, you know, actually be happy, be joyful about what you're sharing. Okay, so use these principles to deliver the message in a good way. So we're going to take a, a little bit of a break here, and I'm going to show you a few things about uh, mastering your format and knowing your medium. And we'll actually watch a few videos, if that's all right, because um, you guys are producing a video for your project. So I'll share my screen again. And I've got a few videos here that I just want to show you guys so that you might get inspiration on how to, um, to share that message that you're bringing, what we talked about in the breakouts before, and see how you can present that in an attractive, interactive, and uh, engaging way. Okay. So, okay, here we go. Optimize screen for sharing. Okay, share computer sound. All right. Okay. I've got a few here that I want to show you. So the first one is this one called rope. Imagine this rope. Okay, pretend this rope just goes on forever. Now imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. You just exist forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on Earth. You've got a few short years here on Earth and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about. You're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to save, 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 so I can really enjoy this part right here. And you're consumed with that. And you're thinking, oh man, am I going to get to travel? Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? about this what about what about all this stuff that's just it's crazy to me because because the bible teaches that what i do during this little red part determines how i'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever and and so why would i spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible enjoying myself as much as i can Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. See, I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy. And I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God. Because when I face Him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth. And it can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this, and then comes eternity. And see, people look at some of my decisions and go, oh, you're so stupid because that's going to really affect this. I go, no, you're stupid because that's going to affect all of this. Man, I, I, I'm serious. I look at the way people live and I go, wow, that is so crazy. You are so crazy. You're going to do that right now, just to enjoy right now. Not even knowing if you have tomorrow and you think that's smart and that I'm dumb. So that's a text animation style. And the next one is actually, we're going to have a look at an animation. Two men bring an offering to the Lord. One of the fruit of the ground. The other, the firstborn of his flock. God accepts one and rejects the other. Why? Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. The word tells us clearly that the offering Abel brought was the firstborn of his flock. But it doesn't say that Cain brought the first fruits of his crops. It simply says, in the process of time, Cain brought an offering. Cain harvested his crops and over time gathered enough to bring an offering. It was an offering on Cain's terms. God accepted Abel's offering because it was the first of his increase. Cain's offering was rejected because it wasn't the first of his. Giving the first to God requires faith. 
When a firstborn lamb is born in a flock, it's not possible to know how many more lambs that you might produce. But Abel gave his firstborn lamb in faith, whereas Cain made sure he had enough for himself before giving to God. Many of us treat God the same way as Cain, making sure we have enough money before we see if there's anything left for God. Even if we give from what's left over, God can't accept the offering because it's not the first fruit. Other stories emphasize this truth. In the account of the fall of Jericho, the Lord gave strict instructions that the Israelites were not to keep any of the spoils from Jericho. All of it belonged to him, the Lord declared. Jericho belonged to the Lord because it was the first city conquered in the Promised Land. It was the first fruits. God withheld his blessing from Israel when one man took some of the spoils for himself. The first belongs to God. There was much more at stake than money when Abraham offered his firstborn son Isaac. When God asked for his son, Abraham didn't wait to have ten sons before giving Isaac. He gave the first when he only had one to give. Abraham had only the promise of having more sons. It took faith for Abraham to offer Isaac, faith that God respected and blessed. And God did the same for us. He gave his first in the form of his son, his first and only begotten son, who was given to us while we were still sinners. God gave Jesus in faith that we might one day give our lives to him. The gift of his son came before the blessing of our repentance and salvation. We give our first fruits in much the same way. Before we see the blessing of God, we give it in faith. Giving the first fruits of your income says to God, I recognize you first. I am putting you first in my life, and I trust you to take care of the rest. So that's a, a message on uh, first fruits, which can be a pretty hard topic, right? But when you do it like that in a video, uh, it's non-threatening. I think people can get actually a good uh, message out of that. Uh, the next one we're going to watch is actually another animation, but more simple. This one's quite elaborate and complex. The next one is quite uh, simple, and this will show my age, I guess, if I know the mess, if I know the the where it's from, and it'll show your age as well. Let's have a look at this one. Mario bermain untuk menjangkau Tuhan. Kini sisa nyawanya hanya satu, dan dengan Cukup sederhana, tapi ada jurang besar yang memisahkannya dari Tuhan. Jurang besar ini akibat dosa Mario. Karena Mario telah berdosa dan kehilangan kemuliaan Allah. Dan karena Allah itu kudus, ia tak mampu menerima dosa. Jadi jika ini tantangannya, Mario harus bagaimana? Hmm, lihatlah. Mario mencoba ambil keputusan benar. Hidup dengan benar. Ah, tidak cukup. Mario lakukan banyak hal baik. Berbuat baik, jadi sukarelawan. Ah, bukan. Ah, Mario mencoba taat beragama. Ah, sama sekali bukan. Karena putus asa, Mario mencoba pilihan... Yesus. Tanpa ragu, Yesus menghapus jarak dan menjadi penengah Mario dan Tuhan. Yeay! Mengapa Yesus? Karena Yesus Kristus adalah satu-satunya jalan agar kita dipersatukan kembali dengan Tuhan. Ia membayar harga yang tak akan pernah mampu kita bayar dengan mati di salib bagi dosa kita. Yesus adalah satu-satunya jalan kita bisa menyeberang dan dipersatukan dengan Tuhan. Bagaimana denganmu? Percayakah pada realita ini? Apakah kamu mau mengakui kamu sudah berdosa terhadap Tuhan? Bertobatlah dan percaya bahwa hanya Yesus yang bisa menyelamatkanmu. Percayalah bahwa Yesus adalah Tuhan dan serahkanlah hidupmu padanya. Kamu bisa sampai ke seberang. Kamu bisa memenangkan permainan mustahil ini. Karena Yesus sudah memenangkannya bagimu.
So that one is a practice about knowing your audience and knowing your format. Uh, if you kind of seem, uh, the story seems familiar. Mungkin kalau zaman dulu tuh suka ada yang bagian traktat, maybe in the city. I don't know if in Melbourne if uh, they still do that. That's usually a little book, like a tract, that has that bridge uh, uh, illustration about how there's a there's a bridge uh, between, uh, sorry, there's a gap between uh, you and God and that needs a bridge and only Jesus can fit that bridge. But uh, yes, he has actually made it into a, like a little video game style thing to, to kind of connect more with the youth because maybe like handing out tracks on the street is not something that people uh, do anymore or, you know, it engages us anymore. Okay, uh, the next one is more of a short, little short film. Um, and so for those actors among you, this could be something that you consider. Oh, sorry. this one. Churches are... Di dunia ini tuh gak ada yang gratis. Gak ada tuh yang namanya pemberian cuma-cuma. Sekalipun ada yang ngasih cuma-cuma, pasti gue curiga. Kayak ini nih. Tapi ini Keselamatan itu gratis. Asal kamu percaya pada Yesus, maka kamu akan mendapatkannya. Apa yang kamu dapatkan secara gratis harus kamu bagikan juga dengan gratis. Download aplikasi Yesi Is dan bagikan videonya. Enak kan? So again, knowing your audience. Um, ya ini masih zaman kayak k, k drama lumayan terkenal ya. So you know, using some of those styles, that language. I mean, even tadi pertama juga teksnya pakai bahasa Korea. I don't even know if it's correct or not. Tapi ya, kayak ini lumayan menarik buat orang-orang yang suka kayak drama. Aktor dan aktrisnya juga dipilih yang mungkin ada ada look-look seperti itu gitu ya. So that could be something you consider as well. Uh, the next one is um, for those of you who are more writers and uh, poets, for example. Uh, this could be something that's a bit more up your alley. Karena, uh, let's have a look. Sendiri, dingin, gelap. Penolakan, hujatan, kehilangan. Semua yang buruk secara bersamaan muncul ketika hati ini merasa sepi. Tapi, benarkah semua pergi? Benarkah hidupmu adalah yang paling menyedihkan? <laughs> Perasaan kesepian memanipulasi hati kita untuk merasa ditinggalkan, entah itu oleh orang lain atau bahkan Tuhan. Padahal, perasaan itu hanyalah bagian dari sebuah musim dalam hidup ini. Akan berlalu jika kita tak memelihara dan membesarkannya menjadi keputusasaan. Seperti bintang di langit yang setia menyinari gelap, dan oksigen yang tak pernah ada habisnya, Yakinkah bahwa engkau sedang berjalan sendiri? <laughs> Saat sepi hatimu dan lelah batinmu, mendekatlah kepada Tuhan. Jangan menjauh, jangan pergi. Karena ialah satu-satunya pribadi yang mampu mengisi kekosongan dalam hati. Bukan harta, pengakuan, atau bahkan manusia. Namun, kasih sejati yang menerima kita apa adanya. Di titik tersunyi dalam hidup ini, kau tahu, suara Tuhan kan lebih lantang terdengar. Kasihnya, tak akan sanggup membiarkanmu sendiri. So, yang ini, uh, basically just using stock footage ya. Ini tuh nggak ada yang, uh, I don't think, yang di shoot sendiri tapi bisa ambil dari stock footage tinggal ditambahin uh, voice dan ditambahin teks dan itu bisa menjadi satu video yang memberikan pesan yang baik. Oke, okay, so that's just a few um, examples lah ya dari uh, format-format yang bisa kalian uh, consider untuk project kalian ini gitu ya. 
Tadi, uh, I, I shared a little bit about uh, preaching, but then also about knowing your format. So hopefully this uh, sharing that, uh, those videos can give you some ideas uh, with your team to figure out how to uh, bless, uh, how to uh, package the message. Yeah. Jadi pas minggu depan kita lihat, itu, it'll be something that's, uh, that's exciting and engaging as well. So one last part before I finish. Um, uh, oh, whoops, I closed it. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, so the last part after you know your platform is actually, okay, is know your style, okay? And that basically just means be yourself. So it's okay to admire someone, like like I said before. And some people say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But um, you know, I used to do that when I was OL. Uh, I used to lead worship back in Brisbane, and I would actually listen to Israel Houghton quite a bit, and I would figure out what he was doing. So you know, sometimes when he try when he fills the gaps, when he's like vocalizing, I would uh, you know try to copy that. good as you know a copy of israel and i can't actually be better or i can't grow unless i actually keep watching him or i wait for him to do something new so don't be a copy of somebody actually be yourself so be comfortable in your own skin speak with confidence because you have the holy spirit in you and he is the ultimate creative he is the creator god is the most creative being in the universe so he can create in you and 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 create through you as well so in the end go forth and deliver his message okay guys that's it for me hopefully that's a blessing and um if you guys want that uh ppt and those videos i can share it with the with the panitia yeah all right thanks i'll uh hand it over to the mcs in melbourne <laughs>